Um, anyway, uh, my name is Barak. I, I am a core contributor to Yarn. I actually, Yarn was my first project when I first joined at Facebook. And I uh, help organize launching the 1.0 version, if you, you know, remember the launch of that. And then I, I maintained it along with Arcanist um, uh, Mel, who now actually maintains it for until like 1.3.2 or something. And um, today I'm going to talk about how Yarn PMP can, you know, save your space time. But before that, uh, a brief history, um, like, how many of you think we like people at Facebook invented Yarn because they hated NPM? Okay, that is false. Sorry, uh, I, I had to um, I had to call that out because as, as Christoph also mentioned, like we do not want to compete with people. We actually want to collaborate with people, um, and we actually looked into ways of uh, you know contributing back to NPM, and um, it was not possible at the time, so it was obvious that we needed to come up with something. Um, the reason um, Yarn was invented uh, because we needed something uh, more, uh, like something harder to break. So how many of you tried using NPM2 for a long time? NPM2, no one. Wow, you're lucky people. Like NPM3, 4? Okay, cool. Uh, well, for, for people who don't know NPM2, then uh, it was pretty, pretty brittle. And if you had a dependency of a dependency, and if you, even if you try to lock its version, even with using um, you know Shrimpcraft, etc., it didn't really stay the same. And back at the company I worked for before at Facebook, we actually had to debug a production issue because the the build server used the newer version of Uglify JS, which had a faulty Boolean um, you know optimization. So everybody was seeing the edit button for for comments on web pages. It was pretty hilarious, and nobody could reproduce it locally because they already had an older version of it, which was not buggy. Anyway, so this is one of the problems. Uh, we wanted to fix, and the second problem we wanted to fix was to have a better developer experience. Um, you know, NPM is pretty good right now, but back in the day, it was not really um, easy or nice to use, use it. Um, so this was the second thing. And faster installations. Now, you know, you take this for granted. Like, everything is fast right now. Maybe you don't agree with me, but trust me, it was super, super slow. And when you have to do something super, super slow, multiple times, or maybe thousands of times per day on your CI servers or your, you know, per, per people, um, it really goes out of hand. And finally, we need some stronger guarantees. Um, I, I already mentioned this, like you know, having better um, locked-in dependency trees for every single one. Who still uses uh, RMRF node modules to fix stuff? OK, that's surprisingly low hands. I expected more, actually. So, you know, if you're working from home with, or like, you know, a small office or something, it's fine. Like, hey, hey, Joe, like, you know, RMRF, no modules, it should be, you know, done. When you're working with like thousands of, of engineers and you just break something, you cannot just go every, to every single one of them because first, they're not in the same office. Two, you don't have that much time. And three, they're not even in the same time zone. Um, so, yeah, that's also one of the things that Yarn tried to solve. Again, we still like NPM. We, we work with them, and we still try to work with them. So there's no, you know, like that going on. I'm, I'm emphasizing this because still some some people come on the online and say, "Oh, Yarn is amazing. NPM sucks," or like the vice versa. It's not really productive. Anyway, um, I only have 50 minutes, so I'm just gonna uh, make this quick. Two years later, we came up with uh, with some new concepts. Workspaces. How many of you try workspaces? Uh, how many know like? you know it, that exists, that the workspaces exist. Okay, about the same amount of hands. Okay, so you just Google Yarn workspaces or, and you see Lerna and like monorepos, et cetera. Um, this really changed our game here inside at Facebook and it also helped some of the open source community projects like React, um, Babel, and well, I, I, those are the two ones that uh, comes to my mind, but there are actually more that are using workspaces to manage multiple repos in this, you know, multiple projects in the same repo. Okay, offline mirrors. Um, anyone using offline mirror? Okay, surprising a few hands. Well, actually not su su surprising, but you know, usually you should not really rely on your network. So uh, here at, at Facebook, we at least doesn't do like, um, how many of you had the, suffered from the left pad incident, for instance? Okay, zero, you're super lucky. We also haven't suffered from that because of offline mirrors, so you should use them. Anyway, resolution overrides. I'm pretty sure nobody knows this. Two hands, okay. Three hands, I stay corrected still. Um, resolution overrides is a solution for when a dependency of a dependency needs to be updated 
and you cannot update it because you don't own the dependency itself. Let's say you, you have a project that uses React um, built by someone else on you know, GitHub or something, and then React 16 came out, and it's compatible, but it enforces everything to use React 15, and you want to go to React 16, and you open a pull request. Hey, React 16 is up. Can you update your project? Hey, two weeks later, like React 16 is in, you know, there's actually React 16.1 now. Can you update your project? And then like two weeks later, someone comes, oh yeah, I'll, I'll do it when I have time. And this is terrible, especially if you have a security issue. Like this is, this is just annoying, this, this example. But if you have a security issue, then you actually had to um, fix it right away. And resolution of rights gives you this power right inside your package JSON. You say, okay, this dependency inside that dependency inside that dependency should use this exact version, or like you know you should force it to you know above this version or whatever. If you Google this, uh, you'll figure it out. Um, and this has been there since Yarn 1.0, actually. So, yeah, shame on you. Sorry. <laughs> um, there's also automatic conflict resolution. Have you ever uh, bumped into any lock file merge co conflicts? Sorry. Okay, I have few hands. Unfortunate people. Um, if you are able to fix your merge conflicts in your package JSON, then you don't need to deal with a computer-generated file. You just run yarn install, and yarn just figures it out and merges it for you. Unless you don't change the same line or like you know update the like change the same. Um, actually, even even then, it usually recovers. Anyway, not going to delve too much into that. Um, and finally, we have an improved CLI. Um, one of the highlights of, of yarn CLI are actually yarn Vi and yarn upgrade inter interactive. When I first tried Yarn Y, I was really amazed. I'm like, why am I using this package? It's like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, wow, mind blown. I don't know if it exists in NPM, but hope they, they get it because I think it's super useful. And the Upgrade Interactive, like instead of doing you know, line by line, you can actually have a full screen page and you can just pick and um, update your dependencies uh, to their latest compatible versions. All right, now the big moment comes. I see it on my screen, I don't see it here we have invented something called Yarn Plug and Play. Um, how many people heard about this? Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, how many of you know how it works? Good. <laughs> now you'll learn. And uh, you'll also see my somewhat broken slide. Sorry about that. Um, so the, let me just tell you a brief story before that, like how this came to be. So Mael, uh, my, my partner in crime for, for Yarn, we were sitting in a room, and like I asked him to like come up with some crazy ideas if he had any of them or something. And then after a few of them, he, he mentioned like uh, something like this. So, you know, yarn install is is fast. Like we we did our best. You know, concurrent copying, copy on write, etc. But it's still quite slow. It's one of the most annoying pieces, and it's like one of our benchmarks. So what if it it went away? I'm like, what do you mean? What if you just, you know need to install something? I'm like, how are you going to do that? And he said. What if we were able to hook into the required function itself in Node, which is available, like you know, that's how Babel on the fly comp compilation works, um, and then we just give you the dire file directly instead of you know seeking it from Node modules, but from from Yarn Cache or wherever you want. I'm like, okay, that sounds crazy. Like, do you think it's it's doable? And he got he got me a working demo in one single week. One week, it was just working. I mean, not fully working, but like it was, you know, he was able to demonstrate that it actually works. And then nine months passed, and he published a 14-page uh, spec describing how how to get rid of node modules, so we can we can share it with the community and like force um, or like not force, but like encourage other people to adopt it. <laughs> <laughs> can we cut this, please? Can, can we just go back five seconds? Um, time traveling debugger. Sorry. Um, just joking. It's, it's, seriously, it's not to force, but like um, to, to actually show node people that more like better hooks into the required is needed. And they were already working on something similar, so uh, we, we're going to be able to shape some of the discussion there and help them have a better API. And um, around the same time, NPM also came up with something called Tink, and hopefully those projects will, um, will converge. Now, the difference between the Tink project is we have been using this internally for a few weeks before we actually released this, and that was one of the uh, the core requirements of the project to be to be open source. Normally, for Yarn, we just go open source first. That's why it has a GitHub presence, and the GitHub organization is actually separate from Facebook, so everything goes there publicly directly. But this was a controversial idea, and we wanted to make sure that it actually worked. So we built it, 
We integrated with the whole system and then made sure that it actually worked without any problems for multiple weeks, and then we released it. Now, it is a battle-tested implementation as of 1.11. There's some minor bugs probably, like 1.12 actually is in release candidate mode, fixes a few of them. I noticed one sl slight glitch when I'm gonna show you with the demo, but most of the time, like the glitch is not really important for production purposes, so it really uh, works well. So what are the advantages? The advantages are like you have faster installs because there's no file copy operation at all, except for downloading them from the internet if you don't have them already in your cache. So there's almost no I.O. Uh, faster startup uh, because you don't need to look up files. Like when you try to require a module, especially when you're deep in the node modules directory, Node actually does lots of file system lookups. Like, you know, goes above and above and above. And um, if you try to use ASAR files in Electron or something, you will actually see even just looking up the file inside that virtual directory tree takes some time. With PMP, since we already have the resolution you know, in a hash table, we just look it up and give you the direct, the, the direct file path or file itself. itself sorry. And um, you also have stronger guarantees. Now, what does this mean? Normally, if a package implicitly relies on a dependency declared above itself, let's say I have left pad, and it implicitly relies on right pad being available, but it doesn't declare there's a dependency. Now, if you have a project which has both left pad and right pad, they can use each other, and no warning is shown. With this one, since we resolve everything at the beginning, if left pad tries to require right pad, Yarn actually catches it and says, no, man, no, you cannot get right pad because you didn't declare it. And it actually prints you a helpful message saying, you know, this happened, you should fix it, or, you know, something is broken. And this is also really important uh, for large-scale deployments. Finally, it allows you to have a fully optimized tree because, well, perfect ho hoisting is possible because you don't, you're not bound by the file system itself. You can you know, refer to anywhere uh, you can. It can be a network drive even. Um, this will probably also help um, Docker installations because now you can just you know, load this directly as a, as a volume. Um, yeah, so how does it work? Pretty complicated. You do this. Um, just enable PMP. Um, you can also declare it in your package.json file. Um, the, the, the syntax is online. I'm not going to put the put it here, but essentially, you just enable it and it just works. Now, there's some small, slight quirks. If you're using Webpack, just roll up, etc. Some of them make some assumptions about node modules. Um, so, you may need some plugins, and those plugins are already written by Mile. Thanks, Mile. By the way, he would be here, but he was, he's uh, out of town right now, so unfortunately I cannot introduce you to him. Um, and then you need to use Yarn node for your scripts because this actually injects the resolver into before your script, so your script when you, your script requires, it is resolved by Yarn's resolver. And uh, finally, you, know, you may be thinking, okay, what happens if node modules goes away? Like sometimes I actually go into node modules, you know, find the files from, from dependencies and try to work on them or like, you know, hack them or understand the code. Well, Yarn unplug to, to rescue. So you just say, you know, Yarn unplug and your dependency name and it just spits out that dependency in a specific folder, tells you where it is, and even better, it now reads the dependency from that folder until you tell it otherwise. So you can change it, you can hack it, and then you can say, no, I'm done, clear this out, and uh, go back to normal. And on Node side, you don't need to do anything special. This works with Node 4, Node 6, Node 8, Node 10, because it just hooks directly into requires as long as you inject it. Now, uh, just like the previous presenter, I have a rule. I hate on, uh, live demos, so I made one, single one. Or I am four times as short on time. <laughs> uh, one second, I'll, I'll bring it on the screen. Okay, this is going to be harder than I thought. <laughs> so, essentially, uh, no, that's fine. I just need to see the screen, that's the problem. Uh, I am going to, <laughs> I'm going to run yarn create, create React app and just let it run. This is the normal create React. So I already had create React, so it, that, par that part got uh, really fast. Fetching is also fast because I already have the things in my cache. Now we're linking dependencies. And it actually failed. So we're gonna try again <laughs> because live demos.
I'm so lucky that this is actually not my punchline. OK, so you know, it is copying files now. It is copying files already on the file system in a cache, one by one, as concurrently as possible. Can you depend on it? Sorry. <laughs> Then it does more. I don't know like what, what the second part was like. But we took, um, we spent about 30 seconds installing you know, this, the thing that already exists on my hard drive. Now hopefully this part will work. Now all I'm going to change is yarn create react app. Uh, and then I'm going to say hello PNP. And I'll add dash dash use PNP at the end. This is available since uh, create react app 2.0. So Did you see how fast that went? You probably couldn't because it was super fast. <laughs> so on this side, we have 32 seconds. And on this side, we have five seconds. Even better. Uh, let's do ls. Whoop. Can anybody see uh, node modules there? <laughs> oh, sorry. This what this what this is the one that doesn't have it. Joke, I know, I knew it. <laughs> and now let's see this one. Oh, we have note modules there. No. Oh wait, I'm in the wrong folder. <laughs> well, this was a mistake. Okay, we have note modules there. And. We don't have no modules here, but we have a .pmp.js and .pmp folder instead. Those are what Yarn uses internally, but if you look at the sizes, um, they're nowhere comparable. Well, you cannot see the size of no modules, but you know you probably don't want to see because it's the heaviest thing in the in the universe. Um, now I'm going to share one last thing because I'm actually over time. Is that is that fine? Just two more minutes, sure, right? Okay. Um, so I'm going to do Yarn unplug. Unplug. And do React scripts. And now I put it into this folder. Now what I'm, am I going to do is going to get this folder. Uh, that's a really long name. You know what? I'm not going to do this. <laughs> but. Uh, we can actually see that folder inside that PMP folder in Unplugged. And if you change it there and you run, run it from there, y your changes will be picked up. And now all you need to do once you clean up is yarn unplug and clear all. And it will just, whoop. Yep. We need types for this. <laughs> All right, it, it cleared it in, and when we're going to do one, one last yarn install to you know, bring the, the obliterated one back, and then you're going to be good to go. Yeah, and it's going to go as, as fast as usual. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> and